Welcome back to Remote Work Bay. I have a very dear friend with me today. Hi, Elena. <laughs> Hi, Audrey. How are you? Good, good, good. Gosh, I mean, it's been such a crazy year for all of us, especially people in the entertainment industry. And that's why I want to bring you on board to chat a little bit more about everything that you're doing, what's going on with the industry now, and what you think is going to happen with the industry in the next year. But yeah. before we go there, um, I would love if you could share your story with everyone. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on, Audrey. So good to see you, even virtually. Um, I about me. I am a born and bred Angelino, uh, born and raised in Los Angeles, over in Valencia, in the Burbs. I went to college back east at Hofstra, um, over in New York, and I studied the uh, industry that I'm actually doing now, which is awesome, uh, working in television, video. And I moved back here and have been working as a line producer for the past uh, year, year and a half, but have been working in the entertainment industry uh, since 2003. And now I still have my home base here in Los Angeles and, you know, and, and working, lucky to be, fortunate to be working in, in the industry that I, that I love and, uh, and currently. Amazing. So could you explain to everyone what a line producer is? Because I don't think everybody knows. Absolutely. Uh, so a line producer manages, the, the key is basically making sure that your production company um, it has doesn't get uh, sued or, or taken care of liability. And the other thing is the main other, the other main thing is also making sure that uh, budget is tracked. So for okay. example, when a television show, I'll make it easy, if a television show has $10, uh, you know, full, a full $10 in their budget, it's a line producer's job to track to see, okay, $1 will go to the actor, $1 goes to production, $1 to permit. But in the midst of all that, the, one of the, the other key things that a line producer does is also making sure that, um, that whatever the production is doing, that it's, it's, it's not a liability and it's, it's safe and having a safe production set for the crew and the cast. And how did you get to become a line producer? How, like, where do you start? if you want to get into entertainment and, and how did you get there? Is this, is this where you wanted to be when you graduated college? So when I graduated college, I really, um, I knew I wanted to get into TV. Like I, I love TV and film and uh, I didn't necessarily know if I, I wanted to go the line producer route, but um, my first foray was actually in advertising right after college, right outside of college, a huge production company called Gray. Mm -hmm. um, and I just realized how much I missed, you know, being uh, actually being in the thick of it. So I went back to LA after um, being in New York, and that's when I got really, in, what I got into reality television docuseries mm -hmm. uh, as a production assistant. And I just moved my way up. I went from a PA um, to my next job was an assistant coordinator. And at that point, you kind of have different directions you can go in. You can go the producer, producing side, the creative side, or you can go the production management side. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I although I do love the creative aspect of, of, of going into the producing world, I really was fascinated with, um, I kind of already have a creative brain already. So I was more fascinated with the nuts and bolts and the liability because at the end of the day, um, you know, one of my, one of my main goals is to, uh, I eventually have my own production company and I realized quickly that, you know, uh, I can, I think I can think of or hire people that can create, have a creative brain and, and create a show, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't get sued or that, you know, that I didn't have an accountant taking my money or something and how easy that can be if you don't have a good, um, line producer. Um, so basically I moved my way up from assistant coordinator to coordinator to production manager and then line producer. And what's, what's after line producer? So line producer can actually jump over to an executive producer that has actually been a little bit more common because networks, I would say the past now 10 years, it's been a little more common because networks have cared more on, on um, of somebody being able to handle the budget mm -hmm. and making sure that they stay within budget and they don't get sued. Mm -hmm. um, but the other next uh, logical step is also being an EIC, executive in charge. So, or, and then the next would be like a VP of production. So it's higher titles, uh, more responsibility, um, yeah. you know, yeah. whatnot, more business. Is that what you eventually want to be? Do you want to move up in the ranks or do you just want to start your own thing after this? You know, because I started, because I just started land producing, I would say about a year, year and a half ago, I would say I don't. I would love, you know, to be an EIC. It's just I'm just learning even more about my craft, um, and even and learning more for eventually when I have a production company. But 
I want to take a little, have a little more experience in line producing. And at that point, if I can jump over to having my own production company, because that now I, I, now I, now I'm in it right now. I know the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. And I think I can, I can run a company. That's amazing. Well, let me know how I can support you. Oh, you know it. I'm going to hire you. Are you kidding me? You're going to be in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah. Let me know. Um, so, I mean, okay, so you're working right now. Um, from what I recall, I mean, all the production was shut down for a couple of yeah. months this year. How was it for the industry? How was it for you? And when did you guys start production again? So I was very fortunate um, that I had, um, I had been line producing this great documentary, um, docu two-part documentary um, for a &E called People versus Michael Jackson. And we had just finished principal photography, literally, Mm -hmm. days before the huge shutdown. Everybody remembers, at least I remember, Friday the 13th, March 13th. So we okay. finished principal photography. Yeah. Um, and that really saved us because a lot of productions, like you said, shut down completely. Um, but we, because we finished principal photography, all we had were pickups. And for those that don't know, pickups are these small little shoots where like, oh, we forgot the, this person to say this certain line or we forgot this one interview, like this little sound bite or this mm -hmm. one shoot, shoot or B-roll. Yeah. So we just had very small, minimal... Um, shoots to do and then the rest was editing so I was very fortunate where we kept on um we kept on editing but also more importantly we had to interestingly enough we were one of the first ones to try to figure out what to do with a very small crew regardless what we ended up doing um is it, we it, literally I've seen the evolution of it because I've been I've been fortunate to have been working on different shows but yeah. how it first started is we ended up um having to inter interviewees we would send them camera packages and they would be the ones to like plug and play basically, which is really fascinating. So we would send these like, okay, see this red, red goes to red, connect red, you know, yellow goes to yellow, mm -hmm. set it up. And then of course this would take time. We'd, ha we'd hire a tech person to talk to the person, yeah. but it would, it would basically the interviewee was being, you know, the camera operator, if you will. And then just kind of stay still mm -hmm. and it would be done shot, you know, like via zoom uh -huh. um, and, and Skype. So it was very, very interesting. Just like um, this view. <laughs> I don't like, like this exactly, you know, and then just kind of, and, and we would just use that and have the, and the idea was that the audience would understand that, you know, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so I was very fortunate to have been working. Um, the, I think the industry did a really good job, by the way. I mean, I know not, I will say most production companies are doing it very well. There are some that are, I don't think they're doing it as, as well as they should be doing it and can be doing it. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of them, they really, I, I think the bubble environment, um, really, really is, is, is you know, if, if people are, if we're going to work, that is the, the great way to do it. Testing, we've been testing and, 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 um, and having that bubble environment and, and under strict procedures and protocol. And I think they, they've really taken it on to be able to still proceed with, with, with work. Wow. That's incredible. So you've been working this entire time. Yes. I've been fortunate to. Yeah. I mean, with little breaks here and there, I haven't been like fortunate to. Mm -hmm. have been completely, uh, you know, uh, completely working, you know, every day, but yeah. it's been, it's been wonderful. It's basically as if I, you know, on my other freelance, my other freelance years, I normally have a break here and there in between a show. And yeah. this one, I, I really have been fortunate where, um, I, I finished that production. Um, and then I think I had, I think a week or two off, mm -hmm. off and then, um, there was another pilot that was filming over in Utah. And I just saw the evolution of that. So that one, they were like, oh, you can film in Utah. They're allowing people, but a small crew. Mm -hmm. You can't film indoors, you know, certain things. And then um, I finished that and there was another project that happened. So I got to see where everything halted completely for the yeah. most part. I would say for the most part, 99%. And then or it felt like 99%. And then slowly it came back. And then there was a brief period where I want to say, I want to say the summer, July, August, when I feel like it, there, was, there was a million shoots because every, every network, Every network was fiending for more TV because everybody's watching television. Everybody's watching Netflix or, or their, their laptops, right? And mm -hmm. they're like, we want more programming, more programming, more programming. So it's very interesting. And they were just trying to, uh, they were trying to get filming done before the next wave because <laughs> everybody was expecting the next wave. Right. I think filming is the difficult part because you have to be on set, right? Because I mean, like editing, I'm sure the editing editors could be at home and just do yeah. that themselves in quarantine. Yes. And, and that's, what's really, that was incredible. Um, I was fortunate too. I, I think I only went to, for one, one of the shoots I, I showed up and it was um, for a couple of days for two, two or three shoot days. The uh -huh. rest was, I, I was able to work from home, thank goodness, um, yeah. and send off either a production manager to go out in the field, but it would always be a very small team out in the field, at least the shows that I did. I know there were big crews out there and they lived in the yeah. bubble environment, but my, my shoots were very small. 
mm-hmm. and we would like if they if you don't have to be there don't be there you know what i mean you, you do not you do not attend so we would cut off whoever we could as a matter of fact networks um send their execs to come check out shows and even they wouldn't show up and they, they you know they're they're looking at the monitor and they're, they're saying you know we should fix this or fix that yeah. they didn't even go so it was very um i think some people enjoyed that <laughs> you know because producers didn't have to worry about you know the network person telling them what to do uh but it was really uh it was really interesting and uh uh, I, I did get, when I went out there, they did it safely, always had a COVID compliance officer yeah. to, 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 to make sure everybody had their masks on and whatnot. That seems to be the new norm now, that every yeah. production set has to have the COVID compliance officer on set. Yeah, every network is different, and some are, some are a little more strict than others. Um, I, I actually appreciate the ones that are more strict. Yeah. Um, and then there are some production companies, and most production companies adhere to it, but you do have some, I, you know, I'm not naming names, but like I have mm-hmm. heard some, you know, smaller commercial shoots that are just, they don't, they're just like, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> go ahead or whatever and uh, you know, do your thing. But the, for them, I would say, you know, from what I have seen from my production companies that I've, I, uh, I've been around, they're, you know, following protocol strictly because the networks demand it and the production companies have to follow it in order for us to proceed. It's also ethically correct, right? <laughs> uh, right? But on the flip side, I will say that's exactly kind of my job too. It's not just that the networks want to do it. I'm sure they do ethically. It's also liability. You don't want, you know, uh, on the, on the, you know, on the political side, you don't want um, network A to have on the news, you know, 20 people diagnosed with COVID. They didn't do, they didn't get tested, right? Like they would just look terrible uh, on, on PR. Right. And I've actually heard from, you know, other friends in the industry that a lot of shows that they've been on have shut down because someone had gotten COVID or tested positive. Yes. So that's, at least there's that, at least, you know, they have to shut it down and they just can't continue, you know, to shoot. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, they do it great. They do it great yeah. because it's it's uh because there's testing happening. You know, they, they're doing it right. They're, like there's there's places that test every other day or once yeah. a week. So it's good that they catch it, and so then the, the so that the rest of the cast doesn't. So it's contained. They're like, all right, everything shut down, and they're sometimes some companies are paying for the people who are shut down, which is great. Okay. Wait for a week or two, see if it's yeah. a false positive or whatever, and then continue to shoot and again. Continue to show. Yeah. Right. Well, I wanted to actually go a little bit into you know, just day in the life too, or year in the life of Elena. Yeah, yeah. It's so fascinating. I've known you for so many years now. I know, I love it. I, you know, it's, it's like your, your career is so, so different from like, from the industries that I've been in. Yeah. And I know you're on and off, right? Like you, you're, you're on a show for a couple of months. You're like, you're like gone for three months, right? Yeah. You're like off for two, three yeah. months. So how, I mean, how does that work? Do you have to pitch yourself to get on these shows and to get work and then you just choose to take a break um, and then go on to another show? Like, how does that work? So honestly, the way I like to, I like to tell people is it really just, it's, it's kind of word of mouth. It's, it's kind of your reputation um, with, with this. So, you know, when I started off as a PA back yep. in, you know, 04, um, you know, you have your, your executive producer that you meet and, and the producers, I meet you're like, Oh, let's hire you for the next gig. So your circle is like three people and yeah. the next show, you still have those three people, but then the next show you do, and if you impress them, now your circle grows to five, six, seven, and it just, it just, it continues to grow. Mm-hmm. So by the time you're, you know, you're, you're, you know, years in, you just have the circle of people that hit you up and they're all freelancers as well. So everybody's looking out for each other. And there's people that they love, that love working with. Uh, I, I, sir, I love, I have certain bosses that I love working for mm-hmm. and I have others. That I just, I like and enjoy working for So that circle continues to grow every show you do and the people that you meet. I like, I liken it to um, a college semester, you know, like, you know, like literally you do a college semester and you're like, Oh, I love that professor. Or sometimes you say like, Oh, I love like these classmates. and I'm going to get to know them. And some of them are like, Oh, they're great classmates, but I'm not going to see them again after the class. But yeah. some of them they become your friends. Right. So your, your circle just grows. And by a certain point, I mean, there's just, you know, I, I, I do mean this and I know even now I obviously with the pandemic it's more difficult, but even now the circle grows and there's always work out there, especially in a city like Los Angeles um, in major cities, you just always work out there. And, you know, you just get hit up, you know, you, even when you're working, sometimes you can't take the gig that you really want to take because you're already right. on a job, right. but you get hit up and, and you're luck and you're fortunate. And, um, you decide if you want to take it or not. Once you're established, I, you know, when I was younger, I would be like anything, like literally I would be done working a super hard show, difficult yeah. show. And then the next day they could get up yeah. like, yes, I'm in. I, I just, I'm, you know, I, I need to make that money. Yeah. And I need to, you know, you know, just continue to work. Mm-hmm. But once you're a little bit more established and, you know, you realize 
you need a break in, in an industry like we work and we work so hard and so long uh, you definitely I at least I should say I need a I, I need a break in between so I try to unless it's a very special job or a very special boss that I love working for yeah I like to um I like to do my job yeah. sit, complete it and maybe if I'm lucky take at least two to two weeks to a month off yeah. and then take on my next gig um and then once you're established you just kind of you know, everybody has their own ways, but I, I just don't really worry about it. I know that I know that there will be work that comes up. And that's not just because I'm special. It's just it's it's more because you are special. The industry. Oh, thank you. I am special. You're right. You're right. I am special. But it's also in addition to being special now, but it's more yeah. about just there's so much work out there. And if you're, you know, halfway decent at your job, you, there's just so much work out there and there's great people in your circle will will always look out for you. Got it. And do you um I guess like do you have a certain amount of jobs that you need to take on to say pay the bills or, you know, survive? I mean, I'm sure it's very different these days than it was when you were 24. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is there like a bare minimum? You're like, okay, I have to work six months this, this year. You know, make rent. Living, yeah. living a nomad life, I sometimes it, it's interesting. I mean, for sure. Uh, before when I was younger, it's like I have to in order to pay my rent and in order yeah. to just make a living. But you know, the higher up you go, and I guess that's due to also just your hard work. The higher up you go, you just make more money. Um, and you, and if you do a travel show, you know, you think about that and you get per diem, you get paid there, and you're also not spending money because you're not in your your regular home or gas gas for your car. Totally. All that stuff you can even sublet your place if you you know if you if you decided to. Mm -hmm. So I think it just depends. I mean, I don't really look at I, I haven't really looked at it in that in that way. It just kind of happens. But like, um, I would say that if I take a travel show in January, for example, January through March, I know already I'm already above and beyond, right? So uh, uh. making extra money that I normally would of my regular rate because per, again per diem, not spending money, so maybe even subletting a place, you know, if one has one. So I'm already saving money, so I know that it establishes for the year. Okay, well, I can, I know I can take it a little easier or whatever um, yeah. for the rest of the year. Uh, maybe take instead of a month off, maybe take two months off, you know, or it, you know, be a little go more. To Spain. Uh, yeah, or go to <laughs> Spain. I live in Spain, um, so it just depends. I, you know, I haven't said like I'm, I'm, you know, and I probably should. I should probably be more responsible than like looking the numbers, but uh, yeah. it, it, it just it happens. You kind of have your regular. You have an idea of what your regular salary is going to be. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a freelancer, you kind of have an idea of what you're going to make annually. And then you're like, okay, you good there. Yeah, and of course, like, you want to make And you want to have some savings, of course, if you can. Absolutely. You never know what can happen. And I think this is probably the big question you get all the time. But, you know, I had I had this same conversation for so many years with our, our mutual friend, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, how do you maintain, you know, just friendships and relationships? Like being on set all the time, being away. How do you – I mean – that must be so difficult, like not being able to see your friends and family all the time and like, let alone like try to date someone. <laughs> oh my God. It's so hard. That's why I think a lot of people um, within the industry, they, they date each other. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's incestuous because they're like the only people that actually know how you, uh, how what your lifestyle yeah. um, in terms of maintaining relationships, it is hard. I, I've kind of always been a little uh, kind of, I'm going to go travel when I'm not working, I'm going to travel and go away. Ah. I, I think the best thing is, you know, um, first of all, you gain your friends, they become a little bit of your family and the jobs that you do. If you're lucky, you, you know, you're, you have some really great people. So yeah. it's kind of, it, it's kind of like, again, it's like summer camp, if you will. Um, <laughs> so within the industry, you, 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 you have these people and you establish these relationships. Mm. But beyond that, I think by just keeping in touch by texting, thank goodness for texting and FaceTiming. Yeah. Um, you're very fortunate to, to be able to do that. I will say as I've gotten older, especially, um, in this, in this position, it is a little more home-based it, it, and well now more than ever because it's yeah. you know, working from home. But even before that, it, it's a little, I won't say it's nine to five. I wish it was, but it's not, but mm -hmm. it is a little more office and go home a little, a little bit less travel per se, um, at the higher, the, the, this position, specific position that I'm in, but mm -hmm. also there are some positions in the industry, like, uh, like editors, post supervisors, um, yeah. that also that they story producers that do get to, um, have a little more of a, um, established, um, uh, lifestyle where they can, you know, they can have the family and, right. and also work in the industry. I mean, that was my next question. I mean, how, how do people have children? I don't know. <laughs> like, we don't. <laughs> I know. I know. That's why you know, it's, I mean, does the industry support, you know, especially women 
say you're pregnant and you, you know, you're about to have a child, like what, I mean, what type of support do you get from some of these production companies? Yeah, no, I think it's an excellent question. I mean, I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great question. I definitely have met and seen incredible Queens, if you will, that, that do it, they do it all. They're these, you know, these badass women who are, you know, uh, executive producers or at the top of the game or DPs, um, director of photographies that are, that are, you know, have, have a family, you know, happily married and, and have a family, mm-hmm. um, you know, X amount of children and they, they work, they sometimes, some of them work for three months and I don't know if, if they get help from their husband per se or their partner, yeah. but some of them work for three months and then they take a t- some time off and then they work again. They take some time off. Um, others have, I do know, of course, of course have, you know, left the industry or maybe for a year or two until their kids get a little bit older and then they come back. Um, in terms of support, you know, um, besides, you know, their, their family, their partners, I, th- um, some unions are fantastic. Um, I would say, uh, you know, I know that, um, I ought see for the people that work in, in, in camera work, they have a great, great health benefits. It's a union, um, and they have great benefits and, and they're able to get support that way ahead and have time off. Um, Hi. but uh, for our position, for, for example, producers, we don't really, we don't really have a union. <laughs> so um, it, it is, it's, it is really kind of, you know, just how you make of it and then, and save your money. And then if, if you know, if, if you're fortunate enough to have a partner to maybe do back and forth, you know, I yeah. do know some people that have the power couples, if you will, that one of them will, you know, work it, work hard for the three months, do a show. And then the, it's the, their partner's next opportunity. They have to, and then they're going to take it and take care of the children. Um, others have nannies others have, uh, and they and, you yeah. know, have nannies that take care or their parents that help, you know, which is, it was just so fortunate for them. There's definitely ways, but I ha I, I personally, I don't know because the hours are crazy. I don't know how <laughs> one does it and you, and there's so much work you take uh, yeah. to home, but yeah. there are some that, you know, unless they're, they're, unless they're the most incredible actors or actresses in the world, they are amazing. They, they seem happy. They're a happy family and they do it all, but yeah. I have no idea how possible. to do it. It's awesome. I, know they do. I need to interview one of these people next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I gotta, I gotta hear I'm about this. Yeah, stories. right. Yeah, I wanna. I'll, I'll watch. <laughs> I'm just no. I'm just fascinated. You know, especially with an industry that's so demanding of of your hours. And I've only been, you know, you know, in front of the camera. You know, I've I've filmed. You know, on a couple of shows before. And like even for like the day, the day shift that I had, I'm like, dude. I've been here for 16 to 18 hours. Everyone has been here before me to set up for the shoot and after. Yeah. I'm like, how does anyone have any type of home life? You know, it's like, I know, it's I know. So it's, I, I, I like, know. gosh, I mean, I want to say yes. Yeah, yesterday night, one of my girlfriends is, um, she actually is catering on set right now. And oh, sure. She's yeah. just literally, she's like, I've been there since 6 a.m. And mm-hmm. she texts me and she's like, okay, I'm so sorry. You know, we're not getting out till 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. How crazy is that? You know, and that she's just catering. Yeah. She's just catering. Like, I can't even imagine, like, someone with your job. Like, how yeah. long have you been uh, on set for? <laughs> you know, wait, the, I will say this. There are shows that you know what it's going to be. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm taking the show because I know it's going to be eight-hour days or 10-hour days. Which yeah. and, and there are other shows, I will say, that, um, that are that you're just I mean you, you do it because it's such a great show and it's such camaraderie but yeah. you just know that there's shows that oh my goodness like I, I've done almost 24 hour shifts you know yeah. what I mean or less I, I get two hours of sleep and I gotta go back to work or whatever because you just had to work that little extra long day mm-hmm. um so that definitely happens and yeah. it is insane but you can you know as you get older you kind of start to realize what you're gonna pick um you know which shows you're gonna pick and then, I, oh, I know this is a little bit easier to do Right. Um, Instead of another show that you just, you don't have to take it because of just the money. Yeah. Exactly. Or the, or the credit, you know, the claim. Right. So normally on, on like a yearly basis, I, I know you're on the road a lot, especially when you're filming. What, what do you, you know, because it's like a remote work channel, like what do you take with you? Like what are some necessities to take with you? What do they provide you when you are, you know, shooting? Um, what is something like, what's in your bag? <laughs> So I would say, you know, it's, it's been a minute, but uh, because the last, well, I traveled last year. Um, so I'll connect it to that because we've all been working from home, which is really interesting. But mm-hmm. I would say um, what they give you on the road, it depends on your position, but normally in production, they, you know, they put you up in a, in a place, hopefully it's a nice place in a hotel room. And if it's a long period show, like a long-term show, yeah. normally like a month or more, which I've been on 
mm-hmm. for three months, sometimes a year. Wow. Uh, they'll put you in a place with a, like an apartment per se, which is with a kitchenette or fridge. And that's so helpful. Mm-hmm. They also provide you depending on your position with mine. They would just because production, you're always running around is they put you with a, with a vehicle is what I call rental. Um, mm-hmm. So you have that, uh, you know, that, that freedom to kind of drive around as well, you know, on your days yeah. off, if you're lucky to have days off. <laughs> yeah. um, but what I carry with me, honestly, you know, when I go for long-term shows, I really just, I, you know, I do my, do my production, my laptop, um, and then my, my clothes for the, for the weather, for the season. Yeah. But the rest, I always, I, you know, unless with the exception of one country that I went to visit, which I'll, I'll tell about after, but with the exception yeah. of that, I, you know, I can buy some, anything, you know, like uh, everything else I can buy, you know, there. It's not like I'm going away uh, to, you know, some foreign, foreign land that, that's hard to to get acquire items with the exception of one, which I'll tell you about. Mm. Um, other than that, I like to re- bring a good book, you know, my music with me. I listen to my music all the time, my playlists, um, but a good book always helps. And, um, and you know, I've always, I've always loved eating out. So I, I even though I love my, my mom's home cooking, it's like the last, but like, yeah. you know, I don't get to eat all the time. So I, I love eating out. So like that kind of brings me home. It, it makes me, you know, remember home and stuff. Cause I like, just, I love going out for dinner. So I try new meals and stuff to kind of keep me sane. Um, the exception I was going to say, sorry, the exception is Cuba. When I went to Cuba, I felt filmed in Cuba for four months. And oh. that was, that one was interesting. Um, you know, what a wonderful that was a really cool experience because I, you know, I got to go to Cuba. We were the first American um, production uh, company for, to film a full reality show there. Um, this was back in 2014, um, 2014, uh, September, October. Um, and it was, it was incredible, incredible experience, but four yeah. months anywhere is too long, especially four months, um, Cuba, you know, in, a, in a Cuba, <laughs> which is, you know, uh, wonderful people, wonderful culture. Um, everybody treated so well, including, you know, even the government, um, you were there, of course, and they, everybody's treated so well, but four months in a foreign land when it's so hard to even, I, our phones didn't work there, you know, it's really shoddy, um, internet it was, yeah. it felt like we were in Mars. So that was difficult to, uh, oh, you know, oh that, that, gosh. that really like, that really, it changed me. It made me like realize like, you know, I was like, oh, I can, go, I can do this. <laughs> I can do this yeah. on my own. I can disconnect. <laughs> I can disconnect. I can disconnect for four months. Oh my gosh. Wow. I didn't realize you're in Cuba. It's, it's been on my bucket list. So. Yeah, you should definitely go. It's, it's a really cool country. It's fascinating. Fascinating, uh, fascinating country. I, yeah. I definitely, I, I definitely enjoyed some, uh, some moments there in Cuba and the people are really, really sweet and kind. And it, and it really is you're, you get thrown back in time, by the way, it's really cool. Right here. Uh, it's like the fifties and the cars are cars. so cool. And right. They're re- and it, Oh, and by the way, one of the safest countries I've ever gotten to in my life. It's okay. really like, I think any time really cool, really okay. cool on, on that matter. Yeah. That, that's really good to know. And what, yeah. what was it in Cuba that outside of, you know, just data that you couldn't get? Oh my goodness. Uh, we, you know, we'd have to, um, you know, go to four, sometimes three or four different supermarkets just to get water for our crew. You know what I mean? For craft, crafty, crafty and stuff like craft services, we call it. Uh, because, you know, everything is, it's given to the people, you know, sparingly and, and, you know, um, in, in rations, I think is the right word. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we, because we're tourists, obviously that they don't say no, but, right, but we had, we'd have to go to different places. We had to get in line for our the cell phones that would work in Cuba mm-hmm. just to get a chip, you know, the chip or to add extra minutes, add extra minutes. Oh, and you'd have to wait in this yes, huge line, yes. it was, uh, you know, get food. Um, a lot of times, you know, you wouldn't, um, you want to order something at a mm-hmm. restaurant and they're like, Oh, we're out of it. You have to wait next week until when the government gives us more chicken or whatever, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. It was really interesting. Oh. <laughs> it was really interested. Uh, really, you know, got to appreciate a lot of what we're fortunate to have here in the United States and, you know, and also just also appreciate that culture too. Um, what a wonderful culture that they, they really, they, they're really kind and they really appreciate everything they have and they're humble and they're, um, and, and they just live life to the fullest too. So it was really cool. Fascinating. Okay. Well, I'm excited to go after this pandemic is yeah. over. You I'll know. tell you some hot spots. Some places are super cool, really cool. And actually I just remembered my friend, I don't know if you remember Arlene, she, um, she, uh, her, her, one of her best friends became the the director to bring the first director to bring the the uh, the musical Rent for the first time to Cuba, and I and she came to visit, and I went to go see the first time Rent was shown in oh, Cuba. It was really cool. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was yeah. that? It was awesome. It was really oh, cool. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, I need a whole list. 
a whole list yeah. of things to do oh, I will. when I go go to Cuba or just absolutely we need to travel. I mean, on a personal note, I mean, outside of you know working in the industry, I know in your free time you are a lover of music, festivals, yeah. and traveling. Yes. How yes, have yes. you been on a personal level this year? It's been so tough. It's been tough, obviously, you know, having my two favorite, I mean, for lack of a better word, my two yeah. favorite escapes taken away from me. I love live music, my hobbies. I love traveling. I love traveling for live music. I know. Um, so it's really difficult. Um, it really makes uh, me appreciate it even more. I will say, you know, and, you know, flash, flash forward to me, you know, a month from now crying and bawling and not being able to take it. But I will say, it's kind of the reason why I travel so much and why I, I go to, I've gone to so many live shows. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that it, it, you know, I expected a pandemic to happen, but yeah. you know, when it did and, and I, I kind of, I don't know, I, I assumed that this was going to be a while and I kind of had heard grumblings that it was going to, it was probably going to last at least a year. And so I prepared myself for that when it first started, when it first hit. And mm -hmm. I, I will say not that I'm, you know, like, oh, I'm hunky dory. It's fine. I don't, I don't need it. I, I do. I, I don't need it, but I, I love it. It's, it's a, it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful escape, and it, it, it takes me to another world, and, and I love it. Um, but it was, um, it was really nice to, to realize that, you know, I, oh, this is why I, I do all the travel, why I go to all the music shows, so that I, you know, not that I expected a pandemic, but I would be as okay as I can be with not, not having it for, for so long. I think the last show I went to was actually literally a week, uh, the same week that everything shut down. So my last show was in March. Huh? Which one was it again? Oh my goodness. Uh, the Rapture. The Rapture at the El Rey. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they came and we saw, which is really cool. Um, no, it's been really hard, but I will say what's really, really cool was it made me realize, uh, you know, that I could handle it without my two favorite things. And how much I could appreciate LA and home even more. I've always, I love home and, and this, this is the, the best city um, yeah. and where I belong, but it made me appreciate, you know, things that I, I've never been this long in LA or I haven't been this long in LA in a long time. So it was really nice to be like, oh, that's right. I can go here and go there. And I really appreciate my friends and my family, um, my quarantine, team, if you will. Right. And I also got to, I got to um, realize that I had, you know, other past, I could do other hobbies that, you know, would kind of fulfill that desire, that escape, if you will, some healthier hobbies. I, you know, I, I started hiking and I started nice. going bicycle riding and stuff. So okay. I, I got to enjoy some, some pastimes that I forgot about. So yeah. like, you know, it's, I, I, you know, unfortunately it's sad and I cannot wait and the second that we can go back to it safely. Right. But I also got to appreciate, you know, some other um, hobbies that I, that I love and enjoy and, and going with that. Until we can go. Until, Until we can go. Until we can go. I mean, there are hybrid shows. You know, the the drive drive in concerts that are yes. having social distance drive in concerts. And there's like, I think there's like there, a lot of event producers are trying to figure out how. Yeah. How can they? How can we make it safe for everybody, but also still give people that experience? Have you been to one of the live shows yet? I did. I went to the major laser show at oh, the yes. Ruby Do. Yes. Yeah. That was interesting. Oh. I will yeah. say I actually yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was a little far for, for my friend who drove. Okay. I bless him. But um it was um I enjoyed it. It you know, it was interesting. Uh it's obviously not the same thing. So I didn't come in trying to compare it to an actual concert or oh, festival cool. the festivals that we go to. Mm -hmm. But it was really cool to just experience you know, being able to get out of your car and dance. And, um, you know, it was a smaller stage, not as big a stage as I would expect a major laser to be in. Yeah. Um, and the, I would say the, the, I would say the hardest hit that they, I'm sure they can figure out, but the hardest hit was the sound quality. The sound quality was pretty bad, but um, it was, it was still like, to me, it was worth it. It was so much fun. I was dancing amongst other people, but safely, you know, cause we had, a, it was a car part. It was our car. And then there was a whole other space for you to, you know, have your seats there or whatever. And then the next space would be another car. And they, they would be on the other side. So right. it felt very safe. And it was just so much fun to dance and to listen to music outside amongst, yes. you know, uh, a, a other, socially other distanced souls, crowd. Other souls. Other souls. It was really cool. I, I liked it. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it, it sounds kind of like um like a tailgate almost. Like a tailgate. Yeah. Basically, that's what it was, you know? Yeah, like a tailgate yeah. concert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should do something. I mean, like, you know, something that's safe, obviously. I'm sure they're, they're trying to figure it out. That might be the safest thing that we can do, to be honest with you. But um, you, Well, you know, it's really interesting. I was just talking to um, a good friend of mine, DJ friend of mine yesterday, and he was telling me 
down the line, um, people may have to get um, a vaccine card. Mm -hmm. I've heard about, I've read about this. Yeah. yeah basically you would have a QR code in order yeah. to go to an event and you have to get it scanned to prove that you got vaccinated. Yeah. How crazy and how interesting is that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. listen, I'll take it. What I read, he's, your friend is a guy, right? Male, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What I, he's, what I read is, is basically what he said. I just add to it. He, um, uh, what I, what I read was that, uh, you, you, if you have your vaccination, you have to have the vaccination card, yeah. but also in addition, if you don't, if you don't have the vaccination just yet and you want to go, you have to prove to, you know, Ticketmaster Live Nation, the show you're going to, that you got, you got the test within one or two days, kind of like the airports are doing right now. So, everybody, so they're like, all right, whatever. Like I, I want this vaccination, but if I can't, then just, uh, to get me to Coachella or to get me yeah. to Burning Man, no problem. I will show you that I no get problem. So give, give me tested every day. <laughs> so well, yeah, I think it's going to be the norm. That's exactly what's going to happen. Well, you know, they're, they're developing um, a, a test you can buy. Uh, that you can self-test yourself and just mail it in, apparently. So I think Absolutely. that is literally the new norm in 2021. I, I you yeah. know, not not to try to speak politics, you know, yeah. but I think that's I think that's the way to go. Test. I mean, yeah. that's what our industry is literally doing, and it's working out. I think it's working out phenomenally enough for people to still work right. um, and in big bubbles and safely. Um, is test, 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 test. Right. So I, think, yeah. I think it's genius. And if we all just had home tests, it'd be so great, right? So much easier. But are well, you easier? Are you going to get that vaccine? I mean, wait no a second. Pressure. But I mean, it was, no, it presented, if it, it presented, you know, to me tomorrow, I, I would definitely consider it. Um, I know I'm probably going to have to wait a good minute, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, I think, I don't know if Dr. Fauci says it's okay, I'm going, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and it, you know, it honestly, they're going to, the truth of the matter is they're going to hold everybody to, they're not, they can't force us to, to, to take it, but what they will do is no, you don't have to take it, but you can't go to concerts. You can't fly. You know, you can't go, kids can't go to school if you don't have, have it, right? So, I mean, at, at the end result, I may, I, ideally, I'd like to wait till maybe, like, let other people go first. <laughs> you first. Hey, and, exactly yeah. Because there's not yeah, enough. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> I'm sure I have to wait anyway. So, by then, I'll, like, see how everything works. Right. And then, at that point, yeah, I, 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 I'm down for it, you know. And hopefully, yeah. you know, hopefully it sticks and hopefully we get back to our regular lives. I definitely think, I definitely think we will, to be honest with you. I, I you know, I think you know, the public has a short term memory, I think it will, it won't go from zero to 100. Although it yeah. may, I think it'll, it'll slow, slowly, because people will go safely. And, and obviously, there's been trauma <laughs> that's happened. But um, I think that we will sooner than later, get mm -hmm. back to our norm. And it, it not to say it'll be as if it never happened. But eventually, it actually will. That's that's what tends to happen. We've been funny enough, we haven't you and I haven't been but we've been through a pandemic before. This has oh, okay. happened in the United States. Right, right. You remember SARS, what? 10, 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. Was, that's why Asia's handling it so well. Yeah. <laughs> they went through a pandemic a decade ago. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about Oprah here. <laughs> oh, well, look, we're talking about entertainment and yeah. television. She's the queen. Oh. She's, you know, she has it all. We oh all look up gosh. to her. She's, or I look, I should say I look up to her. She's amazing. Yeah, she's and, and powerhouse and I, you know don't know everything but you know she seems to do it um she seems to have risen to the top by by keeping her ethics and her morals from what i understand and what i know yeah um intact and, and really just being a positive light for i think um a lot of communities um mm -hmm. women i think it's really cool i, I respect her tremendously just and of course she's got her bestie her bestie gail just super cool right like like, like yeah. best friendship <laughs> girls she's you're just you're just like oprah you're so yeah. sweet you're like Okay, for those of you that don't know Elena, she's like basically like a light in people's lives. You know, it's like she just like it's so infectious, you know? Oh, thank you so yeah, much. So. I paid you to say that. I paid her to say that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, not, uh, anyone that knows Elena will, will say the same thing about you. So thank you. Thank you for being a light in so many people's lives. Oh. And, you know, I hope I hope we can see each other soon because this is this is definitely oh, taking a toll on me, too, because I, you know, I miss going to shows and concerts with you. Actually, my last show was Carl Cox with you. I oh my god yes, that was an addition yes. that was that, that, oh my god that, that was, was so really cool. good it was that was great it was so intimate that's what I loved yes. about it I was like oh I was god. literally next to his table <laughs> yeah I know like, I'm like, I'm I'm disco balls I'm disco balls oh. Oh, I know let's go there as soon as we can go back what is that club called again I forgot the name of that place it's in the addition oh. hell yeah but it was so cool 
It's it brand so cool. Brand new. That venue is brand spanking new. It's it been uh, new. That I remember. I was like, oh, this is a great place to have a birthday party. Yeah. Lo and behold, obviously, you can't have any birthday party. <laughs> There's nothing going on over there right now. Nothing. <laughs> that place was awesome. That was a great show. So so. Cool. I know. I know. I can't wait to be dancing with you, party with you, and, and going to shows together. We'll be. It's coming. It's coming. Have I it. mean. You know, we have a little bit more to go, but I think, you know, I think we're closer to the, I think, I think we're closer to the finish line than we, than, than I think we so. are to the beginning. You so. know, if it's not the vaccine, it's herd immunity at this point. Cause so many people, yeah, exactly. seriously, it's like so many people are getting it. So I think, yeah. I think, I think another, I hopefully by the end of 2021, we're going to be back to where we were hopefully, um, I like beginning of this year. Okay. Yes, I just I just hope I see you, Bernie. I hope we get to see each other, hug each other, Bernie Mantle. That'd be I so much fun. So know. much fun. Well, until then, please stay safe. How do people find you? How do people connect with you? Uh, they can uh, find me on Instagram um, or on Facebook. Uh, I'm Elanita the Pooh Bear on Insta, and <laughs> uh, on Facebook, it's my name, Elena Suarez. Perfect. Uh, by all means, if anybody has any questions, what's that? Yeah, I'll add it to the comments below. Yeah, please do. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, you know, to to answer anything and ha and happy to help out anybody that wants to get into this industry. This crazy but fun and rewarding uh, industry. Anybody that wants to, I'm happy to, to help um, guide the way. Well, thank you so much, Elena. Thank you so much for your Thanks. time. And I will definitely see you in the new year. Definitely, lady. Thank you so much, Audrey. You're the best. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs>